Hi everyone, in this video we'll be looking at level annuities, more specifically at perpetuities and deferred annuities. If you have not seen my previous two videos on level annuities, have a look at the link above or in the description below. As a recap, have a look at these relationships between effective and nominal interest rates as well as effective and nominal rates of discount. These relationships are very important and we use them to derive a certain formulae. In addition, we need to remind ourselves of the relationship between effective interest rates, discount rates and discount factor V. The triangle is very useful to remember as well as the fact that D is equal to 1 minus V. A perpetuity is essentially an annuity where cash flows are paid forever. They do not end and if we write out a timeline as follows, we can see that cash flows are made at all time points. In this case, cash flows are paid in arrears and we can calculate the present value as follows, assuming that we have a positive interest rate. Now, how do we actually calculate the value of this present value? Well, to do this, we use the sum of an infinite geometric progression. And the formula can be summarized as follows. Here we have A as the first term and R as the common ratio. That means if you take a term and divide it by the previous term, for example, term number three divided by term number two, you would get the common ratio, which in this case is R. An important note is that R needs to be less than 1 or rather the absolute value of R needs to be less than 1 in order for the CDs to converge to the formula that we have on the right hand side. So here we can write out our present value as follows and making use of the geometric series formula we have A is equal to V, R is equal to V and we end up with the present value of V divided by 1 minus V. And using what we know and our triangle, we can rewrite 1 minus V as IV, and then we have the terms that cancels out. This leaves us with the present value equal to 1 divided by I. Here I is assumed to be greater than 0, and we use the notation in pink to denote a perpetuity of cash flows of one paid in arrears forever. For cash flows that are paid in advance, we can draw a timeline and show a very similar story. If our interest rate is positive, we can write our present value out as follows 1 plus 1v plus 1v squared plus so on and so forth. By making use of the same geometric series progression formula, we get a present value of 1 divided by 1 minus V and this can be rewritten as 1 over D and we simply donate it using the formula in pink. More formally we can rewrite it as follows where we have the present value of a perpetuity of 1 per period with interest rate I greater than 0. For payments in arrears we have this formula and for payments in advance we have this formula. The only difference being in the first we use I in the denominator, in the second we use D. Now we can also consider a perpetuity where we have payments that are paid P times per year forever. Or said differently, we can have payments of 1 per year payable in installments of 1 over P. Here we can see the cash flows are paid at 1 over P intervals in arrears. So how do we calculate the present value of these cash flows? So rewriting our cash flows on a timeline where cash flows are paid in arrears, we can calculate the present value as follows. Here again we use our geometric series formula where A is equal to the first term which is 1 over P times V to the power 1 over P and our R is equal to V to the power 1 over P. We then have the expression for our present value as follows. Now we need to try and simplify it a bit so that terms cancels out and that we're left with something a bit more simpler. This is where we turn to the formulae that we already know. We start off by rewriting 1 minus V to the power 1 over P 
into more expanded terms. Now we start to see something that we recognize. We now pull out our formula for IP and its relationship to one plus I, and we can rewrite that until we see something that matches up, which is shown in the green square. We then substitute that in, and we end up with IP over P times V over one over P. And this is what we will substitute back into our present value equation to help simplify things up. Here we substitute that value back into our present value formula. And we see that the numerator cancels out in such that V over one over P cancels out and our P cancels out as well. And we're left with the present value equal to one over IP. And we use the notation in pink to represent this. For payments that are made in advance, we can rewrite our timeline as follows and we can calculate the present value as follows. Again, using the, the same methodology of our geometric series formula, we end up with the present value equal to one over P times one over one minus V to the power one over P. Again, we'll need to simplify this equation a bit so that terms cancel out. So here again, we start off with what we know and our formula for our DP and its relationship between our, our effective discount rate. And we see that we can get the terms one minus V over one over P on the left hand side and that this equals to the terms in green DP over P. And after substituting that back in, we can see that the P's cancels out. We are now left with the present value equal to one over DP. And this can be denoted in the term in pink. More formally, we can write our equation and notation for the present value of payments that are paid peatly forever as follows for both payments that are made in arrears, as well as payments that are made in advance. We now turn to deferred annuities. A deferred annuity is simply one where cash flows start at a later date instead of sometime in our first year. If we draw our timeline like we normally would, we see that for cash flows that are paid in advance, the first cash flow is in the first year at time zero. Whereas cash flows that are paid in arrears, the first cash flow would be at time one, also in the first year. And we, we know what formula we can use for this. For cash flows in advance, we use the annuity due formula in pink. For cash flows in arrears, we use the green annuity formula. Now, we're used to seeing cash flows like this. And what happens if we de defer cash flows such that they do not start within the first year and they instead start at some later date? This is where we will look at new notation for what is known as deferred annuities. But essentially, we are using what we already know and simply combining two things. So for deferred annuities, if we have n greater than zero and we draw out our timeline, we can draw a timeline that includes up to a period m and then from m all the way to to time m plus n. And the idea is that our, our reference point for now remains time zero. And we have cash flows that are paid at times m plus one, m plus two, all the way till m plus n. So we can see these as cash flows that are paid in arrears starting after our deferment period, where our deferment period is m years. So this tells us that our cash flows only start after M years instead of starting in our first year like we are used to. Now we would like to calculate the present value now or what is the present value at time zero. So we can write out the present value as follows where we discount the entire period M plus one and then M plus two all the way to M plus N. We have two options to calculate the present value. The first option is we simply remove the common factor of VM and we're left with a series of cash flows that are paid in arrears. And this is something that we're familiar with. We simply use our annuity formula. Now we've given this new notation as follows in pink, and it is simply the combination of a discount factor and our normal annuity. Note that the discount factor is to the power M, where M is the deferment period in years or months or whatever you need it to be. 
The second option we have is that we can look at two different annuities and subtract them from each other. For example, we know that we want cash flows in from time n plus 1 all the way to time n plus n. We know how to have an annuity. We know how to calculate the present value of an annuity that is paid in a year starting from now in our first year all the way to time n plus n. That is simply the annuity in green. And, and if we had to write out what the present value of an annuity paid out in our deferment period, we would simply use AM. And in order to get the present value that we want, we simply take the two annuities and subtract them from each other. And essentially we are just left with the cash flows that we want. Rewriting the present value, we can see that we simply discount the cash flows starting with V to the M plus 1 all the way to V M plus N. And we can see that this is simply the difference between the two cash flows in green and blue. And if we write them out, we will see it more clearly. And in the end, this is another way of calculating the present value of cash flows where your cash flows are deferred for M periods. Now, the idea is that we are assuming that the same interest rate applies throughout the timeline. If there is a change in interest rate, then we cannot simply do this because the present value functions or the annuity functions would each need to use a different interest rate and we then need to take into account the change in interest rates over the timeline and that makes things a bit more complicated and we need to be more careful when looking at that so options one and two put together show us this new way of looking at the deferment period in other words an annuity that's payable over the entire period that includes our deferment period can be broken up into an annuity that is paid only throughout our deferment period the one in blue plus an annuity that is paid only in the last bit or the bit after our deferment period and we simply discount that back to get everything on the right hand side into time zero terms. More formally, we have the two formulas in the blocks, as you can see, for payments that are made in arrears and for payments that are made in advance. You'll see here we've got two different ways of showing what the same value would be based on what is easiest or what information we already have. So we are either discounting an annuity or we are subtracting two annuities from each other to calculate the cash flows that are paid after the deferment period. We now step into continuous time and we consider continuous annuities. Here we have our rate of payment function equal to 1 and it's paid from time m to time m plus n and to calculate the present value we simply integrate our payment function and our discount factor over the relevant period and by pulling out the constant e to the delta m from the integral we can simply see that this is a combination of our discount factor for m periods and our usual annuity for continuous payments. Another way of looking at this option too is to simply see that if we have two annuities paid over m plus n and one over the deferment period of m and we subtract them we are left with the annuity that we're actually looking for and we can simply rewrite this in integral terms and this provides another option for doing the same calculation options one and two combined show us the following relationship very similar to what we've seen in discrete time this presents a handy relationship between deferred payments. More formally, we can have the following equation that gives us the present value of a continuously payable annuity that's deferred for m units of time and that is paid for n units. In a similar way, without repeating the calculations, we can show that the following formula hold for Petley annuities, where you have annuities that are paid p times per annum for n periods deferred for m periods and where payments can be made in arrears or advance we have the following relationships which are similar to what we've already seen before coming to our key takeaways 
we can summarize the present value for uh, perpetuities where we have interest rates greater than zero for when they are paid in arrears either uh, no, at the end of each year or peatly and when they are paid in advance in a similar way. Here we can see that in the denominator for uh, payments that are made in arrears, we are either using I or IP, and for payments that are made in advance, we are either using D or DP. For deferred annuities, where our payments are made in arrears for N periods, and are deferred for M periods, we have the following formula, both for level annuities and Peathly annuities. For level annuities paid in advance, we have the following formulae for level annuities as well as Peathly annuities. For the present value of continuously payable annuities that are deferred for M time units, we have the following formulae as well. For top tips, timelines are even more important once we have deferments or deferred payments. Here we need to spot when we're actually trying to calculate our present value or future value at and we also need to spot if there are any changes to the interest rate that apply over different periods along the timeline and that's the end of this video if you enjoyed this video please share it with your friends like and subscribe